everyone and welcome to Name Hero. I'm Ryan, the founder and CEO. In today's video, I want to talk about the best way to install WordPress for 2020. So WordPress, it's the world's most popular content management system. So basically it means, you know, if you're wanting to get a website online, maybe you already have a website and you want to redo it, or maybe you're wanting to start your first website, or maybe you're a company or individual that has paid someone to do your website and you're wanting to redo it because perhaps they went MIA or maybe their prices are just too high. So WordPress, it is, the, in my opinion, the world's most easiest user-friendly way to have a professional looking website and to customize it for whatever need that you may have. So I'm gonna head over here. This is wordpress.org. So WordPress has two parts to it. One, it's got wordpress.com and that's their remotely hosted application, meaning that you can go to wordpress.com and set up your website there, um, but it's hosted on their servers. So you're somewhat limited to what you can do as far as customization goes. And then there's wordpress.org and this is the same application that powers wordpress.com, but you actually download it and install it on your own server, your own web hosting, and you develop your website that way. So most people that use WordPress, they like the WordPress.org route because they have full control over their site. You know, no one else is able to see their files, control their website, everything is internal in-house. And so especially for those that are looking to sell products, uh, sell t-shirts, sell items, sell store items, whatnot, you know, they want to have everything on their hosting that's in their control so no one else can see the files, no one else can see their revenue numbers, and everything is nice and secure. So WordPress, it is free and open source. And so this means there's no license fees to pay. You don't have to buy WordPress. It's free and it's open source, meaning that the source code is available. So if you're a developer, you can easily customize every aspect of WordPress. And also, if you're not a developer and you want your website to do something custom, since WordPress is open source, it's pretty easy to have a developer or hire a developer to make your website look, feel, and act just um, as you want it, you know, uniquely to you. So WordPress, it kind of started as just a blogging platform, you know, as where people would write blog posts and publish it, but then it morphed into this content management system that it is today um, that's ables, that enables it to power e-commerce and many other different types of websites. And I think they're powering the White House here in the United States, their website, they power popular news outlets such as TechCrunch and CNN. Um, and then there's another, of, uh, there's a number of different e-commerce stores, you know, people that are selling products or services or products products, physical products, um, using WooCommerce and WordPress. So wherever you are on this spectrum, and it, even if you do want to have just a simple blog, WordPress is without a doubt the best blogging platform. Trust me, I've tried them all. Um, so WordPress is very versatile. So regardless of what kind of website you're trying to start, uh, WordPress is going to make it extremely easy to use. So in this video, I want to show you how easy it is to actually install WordPress and set it up over here using Name Heroes Hosting. Because Name Heroes Hosting, we have opt optimize our infrastructure for WordPress, meaning that it loads extremely fast. It's easy to use the application. It's easy to install. It's easy to update. Um, and it's easy just to take full control of your website with WordPress on Name Hero's platform. So I'm going to head back over here. So this is Name Hero. This is our main website. And if you're joining us on our YouTube channel, certainly welcome. I'm going to be publishing this video across several different platforms. So if you're not watching on YouTube, I do encourage you to go over to our official YouTube channel. Um, and one, subscribe, because I do tons of videos and content on building websites and making your website awesome if you already have one. Uh, but I also have a tutorial before this one that talks about setting up your web hosting account. So at Name Hero, this is our specialty, offering offering affordable, reliable, high-speed web hosting for individuals and small businesses of all sizes. So that means if you're just starting your first website, we have a hosting package that's affordable to you. As you can see on our main page, it starts as low as $4.30 a month. And on the other side of that, if you're a business, um, an online business, or have a popular website that's using WordPress, you know, maybe you're already making money from your site, or you already have customers, then we also have packages for you. We have virtual private servers, we have very large large cloud dedicated servers. So regardless if your site's getting no visitors or if it's getting 100 visitors a day or if it's getting a million visitors a day, we have a hosting package for you. But in my earlier videos, I show how to set up our basic hosting because that's going to be the qualification to start with this video. It's assuming you already have your website hosting online and ready to install WordPress. So if you didn't miss if you missed that video, please go back and watch that how to set up my web hosting account at Name Hero so you can join 
us and you're kind of up to speed. Um, because, because what we're going to be doing is logging into our control panel and installing WordPress. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to get your site online with WordPress and also how you go about editing your pages, creating new posts and making your whole website customized. So that's, that is the prerequisite to this video. So what I want to do to get started here is again, I'm assuming I've already signed up for my package. So I'm going to log in to the name hero client area and then show you how to install WordPress. So from the top here, if you're following along, I'm going to log in and I'm going to use my username and password. So I've got my demo account and let me grab my password from my clipboard, paste and log in. Okay, so this is the Name Hero client dashboard, and this is where I'm going to go to install WordPress on my website. So just really quick, if I go to WordPress.org, you can see if I click Get WordPress, it tells me here it's priceless and also free, uh, but I can download it. So the old way really to go about installing WordPress would be to go to WordPress.org, download it for free, put the files on your computer, and then upload it to your hosting. Well, that kind of makes it a little complicated for people, especially if you're just getting started. So at Name Hero, we've simplified that even more so you don't have to go to WordPress.org and download it yourself and then upload it and you know get into messing with configuration files. We make it very, very simple. So you don't have to worry about doing this step here. Just follow along in this tutorial. Finally, you'll notice that use the software that powers over 35% of the web. So that is correct. WordPress powers upwards of 35%, and that number continues to grow. I would say even that 35% is a little bit on the low side of really where it is. There's so many websites that use WordPress because, again, in my opinion, and being very active in the WordPress community, it is the very best content management system out there. It is the easiest way to get a professional-looking, customized website online without any previous experience. So if you've never built a website before, WordPress makes that easy. Okay, so back to the client area. I want to go to my web hosting package that I've already signed up and that I've already purchased. So I'm going to click on cloud web hosting. And now I've got a demo account, so I've got a couple different packages. The one I used in my example setup is called WeBloggy. So I signed up for a plus hosting package. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, right from here, this is the dashboard. I want to go into cPanel. So cPanel is one of our control panels here at Name Hero, and it allows you to control every aspect of your website. So right here under Actions, you can click Log In to cPanel. Additionally, if you scroll down here, you can also log in using this button here. So there's two different areas in our control panel to get to cPanel. So I'm going to go on in. And also, it's mobile friendly, our website is, so if you're on your mobile phone or you're on your tablet and you're um, wanting to set up your WordPress website that way, um, you certainly can. Now, me personally, I like using my computer, I like having a keyboard and a bigger screen. Maybe I'm just getting older and can't really see, um, but you do have that option as well. Okay, so I'm inside of cPanel here. So this is where we manage all of our website. This is where you have full control over all your files. And you know, it's just you that has access to your cPanel. Unlike if you were hosting this over at WordPress.com where it's hosted on their servers, um, this is completely separate to something like that. So this is just for you or maybe your trusted tech person that's working with you if you have one. But if not, you don't need one. cPanel keeps it very, very simple. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom. And I'm specifically looking for WordPress. So you'll see under Softaculous Apps Installer, there's an icon for WordPress. Now, if you don't see this quick icon right here, you can also get to Softaculous by clicking on um, Softaculous Apps Installer under Software. So it's really in two places as well. But I like to recommend that you always just go down here because it takes you right to the setup screen. Okay, so this is where we are going to provision and install WordPress with just a couple clicks. Again, there's no downloading software, editing configuration files, everything is quick and simple. Now, if you want more information about WordPress, there's these tabs here that have been set up by Softaculous that shows some screenshots, the features, and has a demo and some ratings and reviews and all that stuff. But you know, if you're already familiar, don't worry about it. But for those of you that like to have all their information before they install, feel free to go through that. I'm going to head over and start installing right now. So you'll notice here there's an install button and it talks about how much space is required. Now at Name Hero, our disk space is unlimited on our web hosting packages. So you can see it's unlimited for you um, and the required space is 42 megabytes. So it's not a lot of space anyways. So I'm going to click install now. 
Okay, so now this is the installer for WordPress. And I've got a couple options. So first, you'll notice I've got this quick install button. So if you wanna do it with minimal customization, you can click quick install and it just pretty much, it's a username and password. So if you don't wanna go through, you know, adding your site title right now or the tagline, you can do the quick install. There's no wrong way, wrong or right way to go about this. You can always change it at a later date. Um, since we are doing a video walkthrough, I'm gonna do the custom install just so I can highlight some of these fields here. But again, if any of this intimidates you and you wanna make it even simpler, just click quick install and it'll make it even easier for you to use. So I'm gonna go back to custom. Okay, first up is the version of WordPress. So I always recommend using the latest version of WordPress. So you can see here in, in uh, Softaculous, right now it's 5.3.2. Now this changes often. So when you watch this video, it might be, or it's most likely gonna be a later version, unless you're watching this you know, within the next month, because WordPress updates frequently. Now it is important that you keep WordPress updated. So also in Softaculous, when we install WordPress, when updates come out, you can use Softaculous to automatically upgrade it. So you don't have to manually do anything, you just click upgrade and it'll upgrade your website. WordPress, since it is open source, they're always adding new features, they're optimizing things, and they're also putting security patches in. Anytime with open source software, um, that means the source code is open to everyone. Unfortunately, that also means that there's evil doers out there that try to compromise WordPress installs to carry out their own actions. So the best way to prevent, about, prevent that, prevent someone from getting into your WordPress or exploiting your site is keeping it updated. And so Softaculous makes that easy, but it's best if you're a first time installer to install the latest version. These older versions are more for people that know, you know, I need a to test an older version, to test a specific theme or plugin or whatnot, um, but you should not use that starting out, especially if you're creating a site from scratch. All right, now we have to choose our installation URL. First, we have to choose our protocol. Um, I like to use HTTPS because it's secure, and so that's probably what you're gonna do too as well. And you can see HTTP, there's no S, HTTP, www, and then there's HTTPS. So I like to use one of the latter two here with the S, that's secure. At Name Hero, we provide free security certificates. So that's a requirement to use HTTPS. But if your website does not have that, doesn't have a secure certificate, it's going to kick a not secure error in Google Chrome, and that could detract visitors from your site. So you wanna make sure you choose this. And again, it's 100% free and automatic at Name Hero. So you don't have to go buy an extra secure certificate. You don't have to install or set up anything. It will just work. Um, the final thing is whether to use www or not in front of your site. Me personally, I like to do that. I always have ever since the late 90s. Um, and it's really personal preference. There is some technical stuff you know, down the road that you might wanna do, such as using um, Cloudflare integration. Um, so that's why I just recommend off the top using it. Um, I think most people, and in, in, it's gonna load anyways if they don't type in www, but it's just gonna show that in your URL string. So I do recommend using that www, HTTPS www. Connects is your domain. So in our hosting package, we only set up one domain. So webloggy.com was my example domain. If you have additional domains inside of your control panel, then you can select whatever domain you want to install WordPress on. So since I only have one, that's where it's going to install. Finally, it's asking me in directory, and you can see there's an I. So this is the directory that you want to install WordPress in. So by default, it puts WP. So this means that if someone went to webloggy.com, they would have to go to slash WP to see WordPress. We don't want that to happen because we want, when they go to webloggy, when they go to our site, they see WordPress immediately, so they see the site. So I'm just gonna delete the, those, um, the WP out of that and leave it blank. All right, you're gonna see here, a trusted SSL certificate was not found. This is a false positive, and I'll show you how to verify. So I'll go back to my client area, and I can click on visit website here, and you can see it says not secure. So okay, let's, let's type in HTTPS, and it's secure. See the box? 
and you click on the box and it says connection is secure. So when you first set up your hosting, it takes a little bit for Softaculous to pick up that secure certificate. So if you're seeing that, just go ahead and proceed, especially if you see on your site that it, is, it does have this lockbox. Now, if you're working with us at Name Hero and it makes you antsy, feel free to reach out to our team. But I'm telling you that more often I, always, I see this, that it's just not picking up that secure certificate yet. And we've just verified. So that's how you can verify and put your worries at rest. Okay, so now we've got the version, we've got our, we're going to use HTTPS with the www, and we're going to use our domain we bloggy, and our end directory is blank, so it loads WordPress as soon as we go to the site. Um, we're going to ignore this because it is a false positive. And now we can set up our site settings. So this is going to be the name of your website. Now you can go back and change this at any time. So if you, you know, if this is a new site and you don't know, um, leave it my blog or just enter anything you want and you can change it later. For those that already know, feel free to enter it. So my example is we bloggy. So I'm just going to put we bloggy, we bloggy. I don't, we blog it. I don't even know if that's a word. It was just a cool domain I found. Um, description, site description, this is just a tagline for your site. Once again, you can go back and change this at any time. By default, WordPress shows this in a couple different places um, just to kind of in integrate the template to make it custom to your website. So, you know, if you, you have one tagline or description and you want to change it later, that's super easy to do. Um, I'll, just put, I'll just put something brief here. I'm blogging this. Yeah, just something about my site because we called we bloggy, so I'll say I'm blogging this. Um, enable multi-site WordPress MU, so WPMU. WordPress multi-site is for those that are wanting to set up a network of WordPress sites, meaning that they have one master install of WordPress, and then they have several child sites underneath of it. And so we see this with companies that are a little bit larger that have multiple websites for their company. So they might have you know, a separate website for one product line, another website for another, another website you know, maybe for their career page or their career section or whatnot. So they would use WordPress multi-site to accomplish that. And there's also um, blogging networks, so it's for example, like ESPN is, it would be like a blogging network to where they have a section for the NBA, a section for the NFL, a section for boxing and, and whatnot. And so they would use like a multi-site WordPress to have multiple WordPress installs for each section. So that really gets into a pretty complex setup. Um, and that's how versatile WordPress is. If you're, it can power, you know, from your everyday individual site all the way to really large organizations. So most people watching this video, you're not going to want to use WordPress multi-site, um, but that option is available if you know specifically you need it and you want to install it without having to download and configure it all manually. So that option is there, but most people do not want to check that. Okay, the next step is setting up our admin account. So this is the, the master admin to the back end of your website, meaning that this is how you log in to create pages, to make posts, to edit your site template, and have full control over your site. Now this is very important that you keep this information safe and you only know it. Um, if someone else was to get this username and password, they could delete your website. They could take over your website. They could, you know, if you're selling products, they could, you know, change where those product links went. So this is very important that you take time to create this correctly and make it hard to guess. So you should never, ever, ever use admin and pass, ever. You should not use admin as your username. That is bad, bad, bad security practice. Anytime we see a WordPress website that's been compromised at Name Hero, this is the first thing we look at because a lot of times that it is, this is what has happened. Someone's made it, you know, admin or password one, two, three. Or even if that, they might use just their name and then their last name is the password. You know, don't do that. You want to make these credentials hard and you want to make this to where this is a password and username you're not using anywhere else. So if you're the type that likes to have the same login for every website, that's bad security practice. And if you're going to continue doing that elsewhere, that's really your business, but please don't do it here because, you know, this is very serious. They can take over your whole website and it would be bad. Um, so assume that, um, you know, that no login is safe that you're already using and you're going to make a new one. So for the username, um, again, admin's not a good one, but this doesn't have to be too complex because this can still be seen in some of the URL structures. But by using admin, that's the first thing that a bad guy or, or someone trying to get in is going to use. So um, I could use like, you know, Ryan Gray. 
20. You know, something, like, something like that. You can't put special characters in this. And like I said, the admin username, the, the username in general can be viewed in certain places of WordPress. So it's not completely hidden, but you just want to make it something not admin because admin's the first thing someone's going to try. And a lot of times when these attackers come out, they're not specifically going to your website. They have a script or a bot that's automated and it's running the entire internet and it's just checking using the admin username. And so if it kicks an error, it's going to go on, they're going to go on to the next site. So that's just an easy way to fend off attackers. It's, you know, it takes a second here to do. So even if I just want to use Ryan Gray, that's still pretty safe because again, most people or these bots aren't programmed to just go out and use Ryan Gray. So your username doesn't have to be too big or, or too complex. Just don't use admin. For the password though, we have a password generator. So you can click this box, this key, and it generates a strong random one. And so this isn't stored anywhere. You know, this isn't pulling from a database. It's just randomly creating a strong password. Um, and you can measure the strength of it. So this is 65 out of 100. What I like to do is I like to take this and make it a little harder by just putting it in there twice. So see that this here is a strong password. If you have 100 for 100, then you're right on. You know, that's where you really need to be. You know, while this is certainly better, you know, this is better than just using something easy. It's still only a 58 out of 100 on a password scale, but something like doubling this is 100 for 100. So see, this is gonna be very tough for someone to guess. And so that's how you should write your password. Something completely unique, something you're not going to remember, and something you need to store somewhere safe. I recommend a password manager, um, LastPass, LastPass, L-A-S-T, Pass, P-A-S-S. -S. It's a free application or free, it plugs into Google Chrome and it, it will store all your passwords. So you don't have to remember this because you should not. Um, you can pull it out of that password manager anytime you need to log in. So I recommend downloading that if you don't have it already. Um, it's not only just beneficial for WordPress, it's beneficial for all the websites that you log into, including Name Hero. Um, you can click hide here so it doesn't show the password, um, which is always good, you know, if you're in a public place or recording a live video. Um, but for my sake, I'm going to delete this install anyways. So I'm just going to paste this in here a couple times till I get 100. Let me rechange this here. There we go, 100%. So I'm going to save it over here in another window. So I've got it. Um, and now your email address. So this is also important. By default, it just says, you know, admin at your domain. You wanna make sure that you have access to this email. So you wanna use an email address that in case you do lose this password, you can easily reset it and get back in. So I'm gonna use a valid one. You know, I know Ryan at Name Hero works, so I'll leave that. Um, but you know, when you're doing that, make sure that you have an email address that's working so you can always reset your admin account if you do get locked out. Language, WordPress has many different languages to it. So wherever you are in the world or whatever language you speak um, or whatever language your site's gonna be in, you can be, feel free to choose it there. Now I speak English, so that's what I'm gonna use. Um, but you have the option to choose several different ones as well. Um, select plugins. So during this um, custom install, you have the opportunity to add plugins to your WordPress. So let me explain really quick what a plugin is. So WordPress, it's the content management system that powers your site. So it's like the, you know, that's the meat and potatoes of your site is WordPress. It's going to power um, how you edit the pages, how you create pages, how you edit posts, how you make posts, and how your site is, looks and feels across the internet. But with WordPress, since it is open source, there's plugins that you can add to WordPress. And so some of these plugins are things like a shopping cart. So WooCommerce is a really popular one. Um, there's different plugins for themes. There's different plugins for contact forms. There's different plugins to speed up your site. There's security plugins. So there's a number of different plugins that you can add to WordPress. And this is what allows you to easily customize your site and make it really unique dependent on whatever you're using WordPress for. So you know, if you're going to use your site to sell items, if you're going to use your site just to blog, or if you're just going to use your site to um, put out information about your business, you know, maybe you're a restaurant and wanting to show your menu or, you know, your hours, or maybe you're a service-based industry and such as a plumber and you're wanting to collect leads, you're wanting to collect appointment times. Um, there's plugins to do all of that stuff and most of them are free. Now there, there are some premium ones in the WordPress community, but there are a ton of free ones to do almost anything you need as well. So by default here, there's a couple of ones you can add from the get-go. 
One is the limit login attempts. It's called Loginizer. Um, this prevents people from trying to log in to your admin area over and over and over again, trying to guess your username and password. So it's a security plugin. And so basically this will only allow you a couple times to log in before it blocks the user. So if someone was trying to guess this stuff here, it would only give them a couple times before it'd kick them out. Um, at Name Hero, we have security measures already put into place to help block this. It's called a brute force attack. It's, it's when someone tries to come in and forcefully force their way in by guessing username and passwords. And most of the time, this is a bot, meaning that it's not someone just typing everything in. It's a computerized system that's automating. So you can add this plugin if you want, but at Name Hero, we do have brute force protection. So this could would be an extra layer on top of that. Me personally, I only like to add as many plugins that are absolutely necessary. So I like to keep my plugins at a low level. Um, some people like to install a plugin for everything. I don't really recommend that because you can get too many plugins inside of WordPress that will kind of slug everything down. So you can use this if you want. If not, I'm telling you at Name Hero, we have um, protection in place. The classic editor. So WordPress introduced a um, block editor in 5.0. So it's been a little bit over a year ago, I think almost two years now, to where they introduced their new editor. And so their new editor makes it easier to create customized and professional pages and posts um, through a block system. So it sounds complex, but it's not. It allows you to easily drag and drop and you know set up um, contact forms, set up images, integrate your, or embed your YouTube videos or whatnot. But some people in the community of WordPress hate it because the classic editor has been around for you know two decades. And so if you have installed WordPress in years past, you know, maybe a decade or so ago, and you're used to that classic editor, you can install it here. You would just click this, and that will use the old school editor versus their new block editor. Now, again, if this is your first WordPress website and you're just getting used to WordPress, I would use the new block editor because it is really good, I think. You know, at first I wasn't a huge fan of it, but man, they've done a great job with it. You can also click Manage Plugin Sets and you can add additional sets of plugins. So if you're creating um, sites over and over again um, and you want to make it easy to deploy those, meaning that you're going to install WordPress on another site later on and you have like a group of plugins that you want to put on those sites, you can create a, a custom set to display there. That's a little bit more advanced, but it, the uh, the option is in there to really customize. So, you know, whatever you fall on the spectrum of experience, you have all these different options inside of Softaculous's WordPress installer to make it easy on you. So most people are going to ignore that. But if you're a web developer and you're installing for clients and you find yourself over and over again having to install like the same um, stack of plugins to develop a site, you're going to find that a lot of, you're going to save a lot of time using that. Okay, now we have some advanced options, and you can see by default this is closed, but I'm going to expand it just to show you. Um, database name, table prefix, disable auto update notifications, auto upgrade, auto upgrade WordPress plugins, auto upgrade themes, and backup location. So these are just some specifics about how the software is going to behave. Now by default, these are all set to where they are, but again, it allows you to customize anything. So database name, I don't recommend changing this unless you specifically know what you're doing. So some developers, you know, they have a certain naming convention, and this kind of goes to those that are creating websites for clients. You know, if you're making a website for someone else and, you know, you have a, a certain method that you do, um, this allows you to customize the database name. The database is what stores all your posts and pages, information, your products. Um, that's what stores all the information in WordPress. So this is going to be the name of that database. People will not see this. Your visitors never ever see this. Uh, that's another reason some people like to name it something different, um, is to keep it you know, private from something that you know, no one would ever guess, just for security reasons. Um, by default, these are randomized anyways, so WP59, you know, I'm fine with that. Most people are not going to edit that, but you do have the option to do that. The table prefix, so this is the actual prefix of the tables of your database. So when WordPress stores your information in a database, all that information is stored in a table. So for example, inside the database, there's like a post table. And that means all the posts to WordPress are stored in that table. There's a pages table. 
All the pages to your site stored in that table. There's a username table. All the usernames are stored in that table. So this would just be the prefix for those tables. And again, they randomize, the installer here randomizes that to make it more secure. So if someone was trying to you know, get into your database, they wouldn't even be able to know the prefixes to try to run injection attempts against and all that. Once again, this is randomized, and I might have went over your head just now explaining this, so most people don't have to edit it. But if you know what this is and you want to edit it, you have the option to do so here. Disable update notification emails. You want to leave this unchecked because you want to know when it's time to upgrade WordPress. You know, you want to keep WordPress up to date. As I said in the beginning of the video, WordPress is always updating to not only add new features, but also to add more security. So if you're running an old version of WordPress, not only is your website going to be slower and sluggish as WordPress optimizes and improves, and you're also going to miss out on new features, it's also at a security risk because, you know, the new security patches aren't applied if you're not applying them. So you want to make sure that you get an email when WordPress is, uh, needs to be updated. So I don't recommend checking this. Auto upgrade. So by default, we don't auto upgrade it. Instead, it sends you an email and says, hey, you know, WordPress update is available. Please log in and update it. Uh, some people don't like the auto updates to run because they need to update their plugins first. They need to update their theme first. And so um, if you're one of the type that says, I don't want WordPress to auto update, then you can just leave this because by default it is. For me, I always update WordPress automatically um, because I believe that the risk of running an outdated WordPress versus running an updated WordPress um, are way worse than like breaking the site or breaking a theme or breaking a plugin. So I always keep it updated um, to the later version as well as major and minor. Um, but that's just me. I'm pretty much on top of stuff and I'm in WordPress every single day on my sites. Now, if you're a small business owner um, and you're not gonna be in your WordPress website all the time, or maybe you don't have a lot of time if it would break a theme, you might just wanna upgrade to the minor versions only. And so this will make sure if they're doing like a major upgrade that you're prepared before you run that. So it's really where you fall on the spectrum. If you just if you want to handle these yourself when you when you get one of these emails, you can upgrade it with one click inside of Softaculous. It's very easy to run, but it's just that you're there, you're available. If something goes wrong, you're there to fix it so your site wouldn't automatically break, right? You wouldn't be in the middle of the night, the site would not go down. So me working online every single day, having a 24-7, 365 team at Name Hero, I upgrade automatically, but it's so it's up to you however you want to handle. If you're, you know, if you're going to be the type, though, that if you're going to ignore those update notifications, it's better to keep the site updated and risk breaking a theme or plugin than it is to leave it. So, you know, if you're the type that's never going to, if you're not going to attend to these emails, then you just want to do it automatically. So trust me, it's much better to have um, an update run and the site um, go down for a second because there was some compatibility issue versus an attacker getting in and exploiting your information. Um, auto update the WordPress plugins and auto update the WordPress themes. So this first auto update, this is the core WordPress files. As you add custom plugins, um, that remember that make your site function how you want it to function, such as shopping carts, such as contact forms, um, and all that good stuff. This is going to keep those updated as well because as the, the major versions of WordPress update, the plugins also need to be updated. So if you're going to upgrade WordPress automatically, you should also update the plugins. Just like the core files, if you're running old plugins, you're not only missing out on optimizations, but you're also putting yourself at a security risk. Finally, as the WordPress themes, um, I like to leave this on as well. So any of the WordPress themes that are available to update, you'll automatically update those because themes also update with the files and the plugins. So I, I like to turn these on, but again, it's up to you. By default, it's not going to. It's going to send you an email instead. All right, backup location. So on this, you can set up a local folder or by default to actually have a backup of WordPress before it carries out the update. At Name Hero, we keep all the backups inside of cPanel so you don't have to worry about backup location because we make this even easier than inside of here. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize these advanced options now. So this is, you know, if you don't understand any of this or if this was too complicated for you, you don't have to worry about um, changing this stuff right now. You can always add the auto updates later by default, you're going to get an email when an update comes out. If you want to you know, manually apply it for a little bit and see how it goes until you turn the auto updates on, feel free to do that. That's completely appropriate.
Okay, next is our theme. So WordPress by default, it comes with a very plain theme, you know, pretty much a blank white page that, you know, just shows a site. Um, so it's not very pretty. It's functional, but it's not pretty. So it's not something that people, you know, want to go visit necessarily. It doesn't look like a, a professional website. Um, so most people with WordPress, they like to install a premium or custom theme. I'd say most people that use WordPress, that's what they do. Um, a lot of theme developers are out there. So there's a lot of places to get themes. But inside of our app installer, there's some of these complementary themes. So if you don't want to go out on the internet and look for WordPress themes, feel free to look through this library of free themes for your website. So they've got a search option. And in my experience, this search is not that good. Um, you know, I think if I type in, let's see, plumber, you can see it doesn't even bring up anything about plum. See, the search is not really good in here at all. Um, and this is Softaculous basic theme engine. So there's a search, but there's, there's also you can just browse this, I meaning you click these arrows and you can see stuff. So, you know, for example, a um, builder, a restaurant here, and you can demo them. So, see, this would be a restaurant theme. So, if you wanted your website to look like this, you could install this theme for free automatically as you install WordPress. Uh, if we go back here, you can see there's all kinds of different ones in here. Just their search sucks, but you can, if you go through here, you'll find, you know, they'll put a lot of good ones. So let's find something else pretty cool. We got here, go host. Let's see, um, a writer one, if you're a blogger, it's called Writey. See, this is a free theme. So preview demo. Oh, all kinds of different layouts. So you can look at these, you know, before you install them, if you choose to go with one of these themes. So it's, you know, it's up to you. Um, these are just free available right here at your fingertips. Um, but there are tons of themes out there. So there's some themes that you can purchase. Now me personally, if I'm developing a WordPress website, I like to buy a premium theme. I like to spend a little bit of money to have a professional theme developer that's already made it because a lot of those developers, they not only develop the theme, they also support it. So they'll also help you if you have a problem, you know, integrating a plugin or customizing, they'll provide some resources. You know, a lot of them have documentation, community forums and technical support. So that might be an option for you as well. If you're on YouTube, you can search, you know, best WordPress themes. You can search Name Heroes channel for some tips too on some we have out there. But there's a there's no lack of themes for WordPress. So however you want to go about it. If you want to choose a custom theme right now for your site, feel free to. If you want to go find another one on the internet, that's appropriate as well. The good thing about theming in WordPress is you can have multiple themes in your WordPress and only choose to activate the one you want to use at that time. So if you want to just add one for now, you don't necessarily, this doesn't have to be the one you're going to use. You can always upload another one and deactivate this um, so that it's not the active one. So let me just, I'm going to click the hungry one. I'll just click select. All right. So finally, this is all we have to do. We just have to click install and it's going to install WordPress on all the stuff we've put in here and with this theme. The final thing is to email the installation details. So this is just going to send not the username and password, but just where WordPress is installed and your admin URL and all that stuff. And so, you know, I recommend that you email it to yourself, um, enter your valid email address, just so you know what we just did in here. You know, you know, you have a record of where WordPress is kept and installed. You know, if you're a business and you do have another business partner or someone that's going to be managing your website, make sure they're trusted because they're going to see not passwords, but they're going to see some general information about WordPress. But this is a good way to have, you know, a record of where WordPress is and where the site can be edited. So if nothing else, just email it to yourself so you have a record of your installation. All right, I'm going to click install. And now the installer is doing all the work for you. You know, you're not having to download anything, go configure anything. It's just automatic. Congratulations, the software was installed successfully. <clears throat> so that was pretty easy, right? There's, you know, filled out some forms, um, clicked and pointed and clicked installed, and now we're active. So now I'm going to go over here. This was my website before. This is a blank white page. If I click refresh, you can see I now have a much better, I have a website showing, but a much better looking um, page than I did before having nothing. So you can see WordPress is installed. I used that demo theme. 
And you can see, we bloggy, see this was my title that I entered. I'm blogging this, this was my tagline I entered. Um, and then there's some custom stuff from the theme. Um, these can be links, these go to nothing right now, it just clicks nothing because you have to set that up. Um, you have a sample page link, so if I click this, this is what a sample page would look like. So you can see some information. Um, and I can go back here and I can scroll down. You can see this would be like a, a blog post here. Um, and I can see, you know, comments and, and all that and then some more copyright information. So now my site's deployed and I've got the lock here. So I've got my secure certificate. And so my path to building a site, man, it's, you know, it's coming right along. You know, if you don't know anything about making a site, you know, congratulations, you just got your website online if you've made it this far. Now, I want to show you how we can edit some of this. So your site's online, but how do you make it yours? How do you customize it? When WordPress, the second URL or the second website address that comes up is the administrative URL. So this is where you're going to go to modify the contents of the website. There's no software to download. There's nothing, you know, that's complicated to, to customize it. It's all done in the admin area. So I'm going to click on it. Okay, and I'm here. So you can notice if you if you can bookmark this page, and this is why I also told you to email it to yourself so you have an email of it, um, but it's yourdomain.com, so in my case, webloggy.com slash wp-admin. So that's the admin URL. This is where you log in and edit your site. Now, since I installed it right here through Softaculous, I'm automatically logged in, so I can start working on it. Um, if you're not, you know, if you're not automatically logged in, you're going to use that username and password that we set up in the install to access it. So I'll demonstrate that really quick, just in case you, you're not sure. So if you're not logged in and you go to your admin URL, it looks like this. And so I would want to log in with, remember, I used Ryan Gray, and I had that big, long, strong password and click log in. All right, so now I'm in. So that's that's how you're able to edit your website wherever you are. So if you're on your mobile phone and you need to add a page or edit some content or you misspelled something, pull out your phone, go to that um, web address, log in, and you can do it from inside of here. If you're on your computer, you can do it. If you're on vacation, you need to get to a computer, you can do it there. So it, it basically this allows you not to have to be uh, dependent on any different or any one device to modify your website. It doesn't. You don't have to be dependent on someone else to edit your site. You can do it from wherever you are on whatever device that you have. So this is the dashboard. And it's quite, um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do inside of here. So I'm going to walk you through just how to basically edit what we just saw, you know, how to edit, you know, the, your title and tagline, as well as editing your first page and post. But there is a lot you can do in the dashboard. You know, you can add a lot of different widgets, a lot of different um, forms, a lot of different um, shopping cart functionality. So I do recommend if this is your first site to go through and read through some of this stuff on here, there's documentation, there's WordPress documentation. We have a ton of videos on our Name Hero YouTube channel, and there's some other people on YouTube that have some great information as well. So whatever you're trying to accomplish, that's really going to be unique to you. So you know, if you're creating your site to sell products, then you need to go research. You know, what's the best plugins? What's the best way to go and sell products inside of my WordPress site? If you're going to set up a blog, then maybe you need to research. You know, what's the best blogging uh, plugins? You know, what's the best way to set up a blogging site? So it can go very complex, but to keep it simple, I'm going to show you just how we would go about editing our first couple of pages. But in the dashboard, this is where it's all done. So by default, you're going to see first an alert. And this says, this theme recommends the following plugins, contact form seven and one click demo import. So this, these are plugins to the theme we installed, with our theme being that Hungry page, the cooking-based design site. Um, so it says that we need to install these extra plugins to make the most out of the theme, you know, one being the contact form. So what you could do is you could begin installing these plugins, and you can see these are coming from WordPress themselves. So they are free, um, and install them. I can just check them and click Install, Apply, and it's installing them for me return the plugins page. All right, so this installed the contact form and my one-click demo import. So my one-click demo import, that's how I'm going to import demo content, or some people call it dummy content, you know, example content to make my website, to make it look like how the theme looks. Because if you recall, if I look at my demo, 
it looks a little bit different than my page does. See, it's a little different. If I go to my site, it still looks pretty default. So you can import actual content to make your site you know, look exactly like this one. And this really depends on from different theme maker to theme maker on how that's done. But the easy way to go about this is using a plugin such as one click demo import. The other plugin is Contact Form 7. And Contact Form 7 is a contact form plugin. So if someone, you're wanting to have a form that someone could fill out to where you could contact them, this is how you do it. So if, you know, if you're a restaurant, this could be uh, to make a reservation. So if someone would fill out a form on your website to reserve a table, and then you could get back to them with their reservation time. I know there's services out there to automate it nowadays, like Open Table, which is fantastic. But if you wanted to just have a feedback form, this is is good for that too. So it can be very versatile, however you want to use it. To activate, once you have the plugins installed, you would just click activate, and then you can activate the, con the contact form. So now if I go to plugins and installed plugins, you're gonna see those two activated. So one click demo import and contact form seven. You're gonna see some are already in here, page layer. Page Layer is a WordPress page builder plugin. It's very easy to use and very light on the browser. So this is defaults. So this is already installed. Um, Contact Form 7, we added that. One click demo import. There's also two. One's an anti-spam and one's an Hello Dolly. That's just a silly one that symbolizes enthusiasm. An entire generation summed up in two words. Two words. Um, it's just a silly plugin. These are just default from WordPress. So you can activate them or delete them if you want them. The spam is to protect you from con um, comment spam. So in WordPress, it allows people to comment on posts and pages. Um, and if you get a lot of spammers, you know, people just leaving comments that are useless, you can activate this and it will uh, protect your website from that. But these are, these are plugins and that's the a simple explanation of how they're installed and set up. And now if I, um, so I, what I want to do though is before I go any further into plugins, I want to show you just how we would go about editing our site name and our tagline. Because remember, I promise at the beginning of my video, it's easy to edit. So what you would do is go into settings and click on general. And this is all that information that we filled out in the beginning. See, here's that site title. So, um, sorry, I just changed it my website name. This is what you change. And so, go back here. I'll put it side by side. My address, remember, we added the HTTPS, www. Uh, my email address, you can change it here. Uh, membership, don't worry about that. That's for those that are wanting to have uh, membership sites. Um, so you, this stuff's irrelevant. You can change the date and time format um, and where the week starts. You know, if you're different areas of the world, um, you display the date differently. So if you need to change the way that looks on your site, this is where it's done. I'm gonna click Save Changes. If I go back to my site now and I click Refresh, you can see this change, my website name. This is what you change. See, that's how I change the site title. It's done just right inside of here. So, you know, what mine is too long, so I could change it again and refresh it. So see, that's, that's how you would change that. Now, if you'd want to just get rid of the tagline, you could delete it. And if I go back here, it's gone. So see, it's up to you, however you want to handle this, but this is the beginning of the customization of your WordPress site. Um, the next thing is, let's go back to our dashboard. So on our main dashboard, we have that one notification gone, but this other notification, it talks about how to customize your site. So at first it says, get started, customize your site or change your theme completely. Um, next steps, write your first post, add an about page, set up your homepage, view your site, manage with it, midgets, manage menus, turn comments on or off, learn more about getting started. So there's a, a number of different actions. And this is, this is kind of like a wizard, a, a walkthrough to walk you through on what you would need to do next to make your site you know, custom. So if you click on customize your site, it takes you into this editor that comes up here to where you can kind of reposition, drag and drop, modify stuff. Um, so if I wanted to change, say, header top section, site title, this is the same thing as we just did earlier, but this allows you to actually change the color and look and feel of things. So see, if I wanna change website name's color, um, I would just do it inside of here. 
if I want to make it, you know, red or black or whatnot, I can do it all inside of there. I can go back. My tagline, I deleted it. So if I wanted to, you know, change the color, obviously I have to add it back in. If I go on back here, uh, my header banner, banner type, um, background image, you know, this is all design type stuff um, for my site. Background colors can be irrelevant here because we have our, our image here. Um, so you can go through all of these settings um, to actually change the way the site looks outside of the theme. So the theme allows you to get started, a template, but you can customize every single aspect of it. So feel free to go through all this. I'm not going to spend time going through all this stuff in detail uh, because there's other videos to do that. Um, I just want to show in this video how easy it is to install WordPress, how easy it is to get your site up, updated, and then we can spend hours on whatever we need to specifically accomplish, which I'm going to save for other videos so we can be more specific. So I'm going to close out of this editor. Okay. Okay. So again, this you can customize. If you want to change the theme, if you, you know, are looking at this, you're like, you know what, that looked good when I first installed WordPress, but I'm going to use something differently. You can click change your theme completely. And you can see we have all kinds of themes again. So these are the ones that are automatically installed by WordPress. And you can see it's checked installed themes. If you want to see more themes that are out there, click WordPress.org themes, and you're, there's 3,995 to choose from. Uh, and so these are approved WordPress themes, meaning that they're, they're clean. They're not full of malware. Um, they're not um, dangerous. They've been pretty much optimized, um, and, and they're ready to be used for your website. So feel free to change to any of these. And the search feature in this is a little bit better than the Softaculous one. Um, so remember when we were installing, trying to search for stuff was a little bit harder. Uh, if I want to search, let's see, plumber now. If I'm a plumber. Oh, here we go. Much better. So like handyman, if I'm a handyman, here's, um, you know, a theme and I can click, look, there's some ratings. You can see what other people, you know, decide on it. Uh, and it looks like this one's not too highly rated. Um, but there's some screenshots. Nope. Just one screenshot of it. Um, but there's point being, there's tons of themes in here. You know, if you want to change the way your site looks, um, and that was just plumber. If we typed in food, might have a little bit more. Yep. So here's some more restaurant ones. Ooh, that's cool. To where you can customize how the site looks and change it at any time. So, you know, if you have a theme, you know, some people, they change up their design, you know, pretty regularly. That kind of looks like noodles and company. Anyways, AC, uh, uh, or my um, ADHD is acting up on me now because this is, I, I love the functionality, how easy it is to change the design of WordPress, but not only to change it, to make your site look really good. I mean, again, if you've, you know, you own a restaurant and you're a cook or you're a chef or, or you know, you, you've worked in the industry for a while and you know how important it is to have a beautiful website, but you don't want to shell out a thousand or five thousand dollars for a professional. This has got to be refreshing to see that you can, you know, make your own site. You can make it look good and you can customize it and you can edit it on any device that you have. You know, I know from my experience in the Internet industry that it is certainly refreshing to have that amount of control and to be able to save that much in your business and not have to pay a professional and go down that whole route. So that's why I get so excited when I see this. There's also filters. So if you want to, you know, if you have a specific subject, you know, a blogging site, e-commerce, education, entertainment, food and drink, holiday news, photography, or portfolio. Um, there's other features, you know, accessibility, um, custom backgrounds, you know, so you can really get specific about what you're looking for, the layout type and all of that. So that's how you would actually change the theme to something different if you, you know, get tired or don't like the one you, cho you chose at the installation. Um, now, the next part here is more about editing the content that's on the site, adding content. So by default on our page, this is a, a blog post. Um, and so if you're wanting to write blog posts on this, um, there's one that shows you as an example. So I would go to post and all post. And the hello world one is just a demo. So I can delete it, click trash, and it'll get rid of it. Or I can edit it if I want to change it here. And you can see we've got an introduction here. So it's, this is a um, tutorial on how to get started using the, the um, post editor. So if you've never used WordPress before, I would say it's beneficial to go through this because the editor has so many features that you might not know about and so many that would take me a long time in this video to go through. So go through in your own time to you know, see these tips because it'll show you, you know, all the stuff that you can, you can do with it. It's very powerful. But for my video, I just want to show you how to change this. 
So I could you know, change the post like this and I could edit this to anything. Something like this. Okay, so I can edit any of my page here um, I can add, you know, photos, videos, anything like that. Um, if I click enter here, you can see this new block pops up. And so I could choose here would be an image. Here would be a heading. Um, this here would be adding a photo gallery. I can click this plus button and there's even more I can add, you know, paragraph as defaults, but I could add audio, a cover, uh, all these different blocks. This is the new block editor in WordPress that I was talking about. You know, I can um, really customize however I want to put in here um, to include anything to make it relevant to my audience, to make it look customized, it makes it very easy. And if I want to embed something in Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, you know, anything like that, all kinds of different social networks as well. But I just want to show you how to edit that first blog. So I've edited it. Now I'm going to go over here and click update and you can see it's saved. Now if I go back to my website and I click refresh, you can see I've now edited my post. So if I click on it, you can see here's my, my first post. Welcome to our new site. I'd want to change that font a little bit, but you, I think you get the idea of where I'm going with this and how easy it is to customize. This is a, a um, comment example, so it shows you what it would look like if you have comments on on your blogging on your blog posts, which you know a lot of people like to have comments on so they can get feedback from their audience. But you can also disable this as well if you don't like them. All right, so that's how you edit a post. So posts are used for blogging, you know, for information on your site that's new, that's fresh. You like to use posts for specials, for announcements. Um, it's different than pages in the fact that it doesn't update as often. So posts are something that you know are more short and to the point, used for blogging, announcements, um, you know, up-to-date news. Um, pages, on the other hand, are actual static pages that don't change that often. So on our site, our example site, you can see the top here a sample page um, this is just a sample page that was shipped with the template um, to where you could put information about your um, company your business or, or what whatnot and about us um, so you can see if I go back to my editor I can hover over pages all pages and click on edit my sample page and here I can edit it I can change it to whatever I can change the title and I can change any of the content just like with my blog post, I can add, you know, YouTube videos, I can add maps, I mean, just click enter, and if I click my block, I can add all kinds of things to make it custom to my business. You know, I can add a contact form, I can add a um, you know, picture of the business, whatever you would like to do, you can do this inside of here. And when you're ready to save it, you would just click update, just like a post, go back to our sample page and refresh it, and you can see now it's about us, and it also has changed the menu link there. So now I can edit my page there. Um, as you can see too, since I'm logged in, I have this bar at the top. This is my editor bar. And this is specifically because I'm logged in. Your visitors don't see this. So they're not gonna be able to see you know, this editor bar. Uh, you only see this because you're logged in. If you wanna log out, you, know, you could obviously click log out. So if I wanna quickly you know, change uh, my site or add a post or page, there's kind of quick links here instead of just doing it from the back end here. So that's how you edit a post, edit, edit a page. I want to show you now how to install a plugin. So at first, when I installed that default theme or that custom theme, that custom theme is different from the default, it said it recommends some plugins. So if you're doing the same and you're installing a theme from somewhere, it's probably going to recommend some plugins to function. Um, but if you want to add a plugin that you know, you've researched on your own, this is how you do it. So if I go to plugins and click install or click add new, this is where I would go to do that. So this is the plugin repository, so to speak. Um, and you can search for whatever you're needing done for your site. Um, and you can find a plugin for it pretty much. I mean, from contact forms we showed um, an example, I just put contact. And we already did a contact form, but just showing a quick example. Um, you know, if I wanted to add a contact form, I could add one from inside of here. Um, it's important when you're adding plugins to add plugins that are popular and from reputable developers. Uh, most of the time, if it's listed inside of your WordPress, it's from a reputable, reputable developer because it's in the WordPress repository. Um, so if you're finding a plugin here, most of the time it's safe. But I also look, to look at the reviews and the number of installs because if it's installed by a lot of people and it's rated high, 
then I know it's probably a really good plugin. So look, contact form by WP Forums, you know, 5,800 um, comments, all five star or f reviews, and three million installs. You know, it's doing a little bit better here than the old contact form seven. So I like to, you know, encourage you to check out um, the ratings and stalls before adding one. You can see down here, like, you know, 23 reviews, but 30,000 installs. Um, if it's not installed often and it's got low reviews, then it might not be a good plugin. You know, it might be kind of clunky or not be easy to use. But there's 249 pages of for the term contact. Um, if, you know, anything else you wanted to do inside of WordPress, um, you can add, you know, look, here's contact form 7 for Salesforce. If I just type in sales. Where WooCommerce comes up first thing. So if I wanted to, you know, have an e-commerce site, um, WooCommerce is the plugin to do that. WooCommerce, a flexible open source e-commerce solution built on WordPress. Sell anything anywhere to make it your way. You know, so that would be a plugin to integrate a shopping cart, a shopping cart functionality to sell products um, to your audience. You know, easily in your WordPress site. So if I wanted to install that, I would just click install now. And it, it starts installing. You know, everything is just point and click to add plugins. It will automatically download it to your WordPress and it will add it to it and have everything set up so you don't have to go download files or anything like that. It's very easy and it's not complicated at all. Now, depending on how large the plugin is, it may take some time to download, but you can see this is pretty quick. Um, once the plugin's installed, it's not automatically activated. So I'm not gonna click activate, but I'm gonna go to plugins and go to installed plugins. And you can see WooCommerce has now been installed, but it's not activated. So to activate it, I would need to click Activate. And this would actually turn that plugin on. Um, when I activate a plugin, that makes it work. And so you can see now it's going to it's going to start getting me set up here. You know, where are you based? I'm in the United States. I don't know why it says UK. Um, this is going to give me a setup wizard to configuring WooCommerce. Um, if you don't want to do it now, click No, not right now. Okay, so you can see on our dashboard now, we now have the notification that, hey, it's time to set up your uh, WooCommerce to so go through this um, since I skipped it. So once you complete it, the notifications will dismiss. But that's how you install a plugin, so you activate a plugin. If you ever need to remove a plugin, I always recommend um, deactivating it first, like contact form seven, you can click deactivate. So deactivating it makes it not work on the site anymore, but doesn't remove it. So maybe, you know, your site's not working and you want to see if it's a plugin that's causing it not to work. You can always deactivate it before uninstalling it completely. But to completely uninstall, like Hello Dolly serves real no purpose. So we click delete and it'll take it out. Okay, so that is WordPress in a nutshell. There is so much more to WordPress. We could continue to go on and on and on, but there's the basic meat and potatoes of launching WordPress, installing it on your site, having your site that's secure and set up and ready to go, and also how to customize the basic theme, um, the name, how to make pages and posts. You know, they, I showed you how to edit. If you need to go make posts, it's you know pretty much the same process, just clicking add new, adding your new post, going down here to pages, adding a new page. Um, but there is so much you can do with it. And you, know, you can make a site that has five pages. You can make a site with one page. You can make a site with thousands of pages. Regardless of what you're trying to accomplish, you can do it with WordPress. And notice, nothing has asked us to pay anything. We've got our web hosting account set up, and now we're just going. You know, we found all kinds of free themes. We've got free plugins. WooCommerce is out there. It's free. So there's a, there's a, this is the way you make a professional website that's easy, affordable, and best of all, it's yours. You know, there is no, um, there's no, it's your site, your files. If you decide to move hosts, if you decide to leave Name Hero, we hope you don't. But if you did, you could take your site with you. They're your files. No one else has them. They're just your files. And so I think that's one of the biggest advantages to WordPress is you're developing a site to where they are your files. You can physically download them to your computer and you have it saved. It's not like it's out there to where you're dependent upon having internet access or whatnot to retrieve your files. So um, that's always important. That's one of my favorite things about WordPress. So if you have any questions on how to install WordPress or how to make some of these simple modifications, feel free to ask here on our YouTube video. I'm um, asking the comments. I personally will reply back. Um, if you like this video, I certainly do appreciate a thumbs up. Thumbs up allow me to, that lets me know that, hey, you know, our audience really enjoyed seeing the WordPress setup. Now I need to probably get into detail about how to set up specifics like an e-commerce site or set up a specific blogging site. Um, so we 
certainly do appreciate those thumbs up. Also subscribing to our YouTube channel. Um, again, in this whole video, I could have done, or you know, I'm still going to do several sub videos on many specifics. You know, plugins I recommend, plugins to speed your site up, plugins to secure your site even further, um, good themes to use. So there's several other um, videos that we do and we cover here at Name Hero. So if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, then it'll make sure to send you a notification. We upload a new video, so then you can kind of build on your knowledge. So that's um, important, and we appreciate that if you do subscribe. But it makes it easy to know when there's an update with us, so we certainly do appreciate that. If there's anything else I can do to make your experience with us at Name Hero better, or if there's any WordPress questions you would like to ask me, you know, let me know, and I'd be more than happy to reply back and try my best to help you out. But I want to thank you a bunch for watching and using us here at Name Hero. We try to make WordPress very simple, very easy to use, but we keep your website online, we keep it extremely fast, and we keep it secure. So thanks so much for watching. Once again, I'm Ryan Gray, the founder and CEO at NameHero.com.